Football is not just a spin to win game. We have different skills, tactics, and strategies. It is a very competitive game where it keeps your body active and enhances your eye-hand coordination skill. And it allows you to spend more time with family and friends. No matter what age you are in, you will always find this little table really interesting. So, you want to learn some tricks to impress your friends? Now, let's get started. In this class, you are going to learn all the fundamentals in football. The snake shot, the pole shot, the brush pass, and the stick pass. Don't get shocked by that. I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step approach to these skills and I will give you some actionable tips for you so that you could pick them up fast. Now, let me give you an overview in the game of football first. The table consists of 22 players and 8 rods and you could find 11 players and 4 rods for each side and you could see there are 3 forwards, 5 midfielders, 2 defenders and 1 goalkeeper. However, we do not call that in football. We call it the 3 bar, the 5 bar, the 2 bar, and we call both of these rods as the goalie rod. And you will find 90% of the table come with this formation. So, let's talk about some basic rules that you need to know first. First, no spinning. The first rule that you need to know is no spinning. In definition, a spin is a rule for when the rod completes a 360 degree rotation without touching the ball. So make sure not to let go the rods anytime. However, if you like to spin the rods, I will show you how to spin the rods legally in the offensive section. Second, serve the ball. You do not want to throw the ball into the playing area. Instead, you want to do a coin toss with your opponents and decide who will serve the ball. Let's say you won the toss, place the ball under your 5 bar in the center. And now, let the game begin. Make sure you touch two guys first before you go for the shot. Otherwise, it is an illegal shot. Third, time of possession. In top level gameplay, everyone could control the ball just like that. And this is why there are different time limits for each rod. You have 15 seconds on your 3 bar, 10 seconds on your 5 bar, and 15 seconds on both of your goalie rods. If you have over the time limit, your opponent will get the serve. Fourth, game format. You could play singles or doubles with your friends. In singles, you are the only one to control all the four rods. However, in doubles, you could either be the forward taking control of the three bar and five bar, or be the goalie taking control of the two bar and the goal area. There are different game formats that you could play with your friends. And let me introduce two common formats. First, best of five games, which means you have to win three games to win the match, and you have to play five points in each game. Second, first to seven, which means you have to get seven goals in one match only. I guess you are not here for the rules and I think it is more than enough already. Now, let's move on to the next section. Ball control is the core in football. If you are not able to bring the ball back and forth under the same rod, there are not many skills that you can do on the table. And I'm going to show you the three most important ball control skills in football. Make sure you learn them first because they are required for the following sections. First, tech tech. Could you hear the sound? This is why we called it tech tech. In definition, tech tech is the skill that you are passing the ball between the two guys under the same rod. If you just start off playing football, try it with the two bar first. The reason is that the men on the two bar are the furthest apart when you compare with the other bars on the table. 
In other words, there are more times for you to adjust the ball direction. Make sure the ball is staying under the rod all the time. If the ball is moving away from the bar, you have to use the man to adjust the ball direction. For example, if you see the ball is rolling to the left side, you have to use the man to adjust the direction of the ball by hitting the left side of the ball. Just like that. Once you get used to this, you could try to take tack with the three bar between the center guy and the near guy. Or you could take tack with the near guy and the furthest guy apart on the three bar. After that, you could try with your left hand on the five bar. It takes some practice once you get used to the motion, you could do all kinds of tic-tac as you want. The next ball control skill is cushion. Instead of tic tac between the two guys under the same rod, we could control where we want to stop the ball. You can stop it in here, or here, or here. It is all about cushioning the ball to our desired position. For this skill, I would suggest you to start with the free bar and cushion the ball with the center guy and the near guy. So before we do the tech tech between these two guys, and now you want to do this. So how could we do this? Let's say when the ball is moving towards this guy, for the tech tech, you are going to push the ball back, but for cushion, you want to get the man close to the ball, close to the ball, or wait the ball come close to the man. Now, you want to follow the same direction, follow the same direction of the ball. Make sure the ball and the man stick together, then you could try to decelerate the speed of the ball until it reaches the position that you want. It takes some practice to get used to this motion and it is required for one of the offensive shots in the next section. For the previous two ball control skills, we are using the size of the man and for the last ball control skill, we are going to use the front and the back of the man, which is pinning the ball. Let me introduce two common methods to get the ball to the pinning position. First, you start the ball from the near guy and bring the ball to the center. Now, you use the center guy to bring the ball forward. And before it rolls it away, you pin the ball immediately. Second, you start off with the tic tac motion. And instead of using the center guy to bring the ball forward, you use the near man to bring the ball forward. And before it rolls away, you pin the ball with the center guy. And this is how you pin it with the second method. Try it out and see which method is easier for you. After you are able to get the ball in the pinned position, you could try to walk the ball around.
from the center guy to the near guy and go back up back to the center guy and to the furthest guy on the three bar try this practice for a few times and once you get used to the smaller step motion you could try it with wider steps make sure to take some practice to get used to this motion and it is required for one of the offensive shots in the next section when practicing the ball control skill I realized that most of the beginners tend to focus on what is happening on the table how the ball rolls, how the man moves or how to get the ball back to the correct direction however they tend to forget what is happening outside of the table they are either standing upright or only have one hand on the handle only it is important that we are practicing for the real match so lean forward a bit and have both of your hands on the handle don't just practice just for the sake of practice now you have learned the basic ball control skills it is time to move on to the most entertaining part in football offense let's talk about pull shot first basically the pull shot is where you set up the ball in front of the far side of the goal now you pull the ball and shoot this is how the pull shot looks like it is a very fast shot and you could pick off shooting small holes effectively nothing fancy for this shot simple is the key so how do you set up for the pull shot now you are going to apply what we have learned in ball control when you have the ball on your three bar you take tack and get the ball between the center guy and the near guy now you cushion the ball with the right side of the center guy until it reaches the furthest point the furthest point so that you could not go further with the center guy and the bumper is stuck to the wall and this is the setup position for the pole shot it is better to get the ball slightly backward behind the bar so that you could square off the shot easily if the ball is not in the optimum position you could simply adjust the ball with the center guy until it is placed behind the bar now you are ready to do the pull shot before that let's take a look at the grip and the stance it is recommended to hold the handle like how you hold the motorcycle throttle try to align the back of the hand to stay flat such that it is parallel to the edge of the table you could try to do a few shots and adjust the grip to find the most comfortable position for yourself as for the stance you want to have the foot width slightly wider than your shoulder width with the left foot pointing forward to the 12 o'clock position and your right foot pointing towards to the 2 o'clock position slightly bend your knees and lean forward to the table now you have set up for the pull shot and your body is also ready for the shot you try to pull and shoot it is a bit difficult to control the shot at the beginning take your time and get the feeling of the pull shot once you start to get the feeling of the pull shot it is time to consider the shooting options let's take a closer look at the goal area you have to read the defense and analyze how your opponent places his goalie rods identify the opening and execute the shot for example if he is blocking the straight and the center you could go long if he is blocking the straight and the long you could go steep if he is blocking the split and the long the straight is open but of course in the real match your opponent is going to vary his defense 
so it is important to practice the motion of your pull shot and learn how to read the defense properly. Another point I want to highlight is that make sure you are setting up your pull shot properly. If you are not setting up at the far side of the goal, let's say you are setting up at the center, you are not utilizing the whole width of the goal and you could not go straight from this position. In other words, your opponent could simply shuffle the defense around this area around this area and it would be difficult for you to get a score. The quality of your setup will affect the quality of your shot. The pull shot is a passive shot. If you are a more active person, the snake shot is here for you. Basically, the snake shot is where you set up the ball in the pink position with the center guy. Now, you place your wrist on the handle and rock the ball. Now, you spin the rod and catch the handle with your palm. This is how the snake shot looks like. It is not hard to learn the snake shot because it is the only one motion shot in football. You could either go pull side or the push side. However, you may ask that you are spinning the rod. The snake shot is not a legal shot. Let us recall the definition of spinning. In definition, a spin is a rule for when the rod completes a 30, 160 degree rotation without touching the ball. Now, let's take a closer look of what is actually happening in the snake shot. The rod only completes at around 270 degree rotation. In other words, it is not a full rotation. And that's why the snake shot is a legal shot. However, if you could not catch the rod after you have made the shot, the rule will come into effect. So, how do you set up for the snake shot? This is same as what you have learned in the ball control section. Check it out again if you could not remember it. And now, you place the ball right at the center in front of the goal. And that's the setup for the snake shot. Once you have set up for the snake shot, instead of holding the handle with your palm, you want to place the wrist right on the handle in the dented area. Make sure your arm is pointing towards the ground. Now, you try to move the handle back and forth while applying some pressure towards the ground so that the ball will not slip away from the pin position. Now, you try a few times and adjust your grip until you find the ones that you feel comfortable with. Then, for your stance, similar to the pole shot, you want to have the foot width slightly wider than your shoulder width with the left foot pointing forward to the 12 o'clock position and your right foot pointing towards the 2 o'clock position slightly bend your knees and lean forward to the table now you have set up for the snake shot and your body is also ready for the shot try to rock the ball a few times spin the rod and catch the handle with your palm take some practice and get the feeling of the snake shot. Adjust your grip and stance if necessary. Then you could try to do the pull side or push side. Let me show you how to do the pull side. And you could apply the same principle on the push side. First, make sure you are rocking the ball. When the man moves to the push side, you add some power to the pull direction and bring the man to the pull side. The ball will follow, the ball will follow and goes to the pull side as well. 
Now, when you see both of the man and the ball are on the pole side, you spin the rod immediately. And that's how you do the snake shot for the pole side. It does not look natural at the beginning, but the speed will come by when you get the feeling of the snake shot motion. It all comes down to practice. For the shooting option, let's take a closer look at the goal area. You have to read the defense and analyze how your opponent places his goalie rod. Identify the openings and execute the shot. For example, if he is blocking the straight and the pole side, you could go for the push. If he is blocking the straight and the push, you could go for the pole. If he is blocking both of the pole side and the push side, the straight is wide open. The concept is similar to the pole shot. Every shot has their pros and cons. No matter which shot you are choosing, think of its downside first and determine which downside you are more persistent to overcome. For example, this next shot is a two directional shot. You need to practice for two different motions. As for the pull shot, it takes time to develop an unraceable long pull shot due to its distance. However, it is great for you to stick with one shot first because everyone has different preference. Stay persistent and stick with the shot for around two to three months and you will know the answer. Now, you have learned the two common offensive shots on the three bar. So, how could we get more possession on your free bar for shooting? The answer is passing. And I'm going to show you the two passing series from the 5 bar to the free bar. And we are going to use the two nearest guys on the 5 bar next to the near wall in each passing series. So, why do we need to use two guys in passing? Because there is a rule that if the ball is not moving, you can't pass it from the 5 bar to the 3 bar without first touching a second player figure. So keep this in mind whenever you are trying to advance the ball from your 5 bar to your 3 bar. Let's talk about the catching part first. You want to place your 3 bar all the way to the near wall. Make sure the bumper is stuck onto the wall and angle the man slightly forward so that it could absorb the energy when you are catching the pass. For both of the passing series, you could do the wall pass or the lane pass. For the wall pass, you do not need to move your 3 bar to catch the pass because in perfect situation, the ball will click into this gap between the man and the wall. However, for the lane pass, you have to bring your nearest guy to this point to catch the pass. Make sure you are angling at around 45 degrees forward when you are catching the pass, otherwise the ball will bounce off and you are going to lose the possession. Let's talk about the brush pass first. To set up for the brush pass, you want to place the ball behind the bar next to the right side of the second man. Now, you push the ball towards yourself, pass the ball to the nearest guy, and while the ball is still in motion, is still in motion, you hover over the ball with the nearest guy, just like doing the brush motion. 
and you could choose either go the wall pass or the lane pass. Make sure the ball is still in motion before the pass. Otherwise, you have to reset the ball by bringing it back to the second guy and redo the motion again. The brush pass is not about speed. It is all about angles. If the ball is not further back enough, it is hard to do any steep angle pass. In other words, the best position for the brush pass is to get the ball as furthest behind the rod as possible. In this position, you could choose to do steep angle pass or straight pass. As for the stick pass, I'm going to show you the most basic form of stick pass in the world of football, the stationary stick pass. When the brush pass is about angles, the stick pass is about speed. To set up for the stationary stick pass, you want to place the ball in front of the bar next to the right side of the second man. Make sure the ball is sitting in front of the fourth guy of your opponent's five bar. In addition, I like to use the dot as an indicator for the setup, so you know where to place the ball every time before the pass. Now, for the actual pass, you push the ball towards yourself and pass the ball to the nearest guy and hit the ball with it. A short pull would be the lane pass, and the long pull would be the wall pass. An extra tip for this pass is that you want to minimize the backswing motion when you do the pass. The reason for that is, if you have a high backswing motion, your opponent has a longer time to see whether you are doing the lane pass or the wall pass, then they could react and block your pass accordingly. In other words, try to limit the backswing motion and do not let the man flick pass its vertical direction so that the man is perpendicular to the ground when you are doing the pass. It takes time to develop the speed of the stationary stick pass, so practice and practice until you get the feel of the motion. Passing requires both of your hands to work together, so it would be more difficult to execute than the free bar shooting. Now, let me give you some tips on how to speed up the learning process. You want to break down the motion into two. For the brush pass, you want to set up like this. You place the ball between the second man and the nearest guy behind the bar. Then you place your opponent's five bar right in front of the ball. Now, you hover over the ball like how you do the brush pass and try to go for the lane pass and wall pass from the same position. Once you get used to this motion, you could start to do the actual brush pass. For the stack pass, you want to skip the catching pass first. Since you do not need to move your free bar to catch the pass, it will be the same as how you practice for the actual passing. However, if you could not execute the pass properly, do it slow and learn the motion first before you speed up the pass. On the other hand, if you are practicing for the lane pass, you want to bring your free bar to the catching position first, so that you could focus on the passing motion only. 
once you get used to this motion, you could start to incorporate the catching motion into your practice. Now you have made your way to the last fundamental in football, defense. Let's take a closer look on the goal first. As you can see, no matter how you place your defending rods, you could not cover all the holes. However, instead of messing your goalie rods around, hoping for a block, you should think of one core question. How could you maximize the defending area? Now, I'm going to show you the three steps to achieve this. First, you want to avoid any eye formation. So what is an eye formation? Basically, when your goalie rods are lined up together, it is considered as an eye formation. As you can see, both rods are covering the same position. When you could block with one guy, there is no point to block the same position with two guys overlapping on each other. You want to separate them so that you could maximize your defending area. And now, another question arose. How should you separate your goalie rods? To achieve this, you lift your goalie rods until they are parallel to the surface. Now, you use the ball as an indicator and place it between the men so that you know they are one ball width apart from each other. Take the ball away and drop your man back to its original position. And this is how much you should separate your goalie rods. Remember this position and you want to keep this formation all the time ensure the space between the men at around 1 to 1.54 width to maximize the defending area now take a look at each man should you angle them forward or backward or should you keep them at this original position For your toolbar, you want to angle it backward. And for the goalkeeper, you want to angle it forward. Let me explain. Basically, by angling your toolbar backward, there will be lower chance to deflect the ball away if you make a block. In other words, your opponents could not get another chance to make another shot. In perfect situation, you may steal the ball away just like how you catch your own pass. For your goalkeeper, by angling the man forward, you are trying to deflect the ball away from the goal and make sure that the ball would not drop into the goal even you make a block. Now, when you feel this defense formation from the top, due to the nature of this formation, you could see that it is also difficult to score with any angle shots. Compare with this or this. This is the most difficult and you have maximized the defending area. For the last step, you want to randomize the pattern of your defense in order to make it more difficult to be scored by your opponent. You do not want a standard movement like this, but you want to do something like this. You add some hedges in your movement so that you are giving headache to your opponents. Let's make a quick summary on what you have learned so far. We have talked about the three basic ball control skills, tech tag, cushioning, and pinning, which you are going to apply in shooting and passing. The two common offensive shots, snake shot, and pole shot. The two passing series, brush pass and the stick pass. And lastly, the basic defense system. It is recommended that you follow this order of practice and practice at least half an hour before you move on to the next skill. If you still struggle with any shots or pass, back to the basic and play around with ball control first. Ball control is the core in football.